Mr. Big Bang. What's happened? How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. That's I'm good. good. Some changes, Pierce. Yes. We are in Liverpool today. We are not normally in Liverpool when we do an interview. Tell me what's. Uh, tell me how this has all come about. Yeah. So um, as like spoke to a few other interviewers like, as well. I said, uh, I think this is a good move for me. Um, closer to home, as we said before, and. Um, yeah, literally, it's a perfect fit. I liked how I'm in getting coached and stuff like that, so I think it's a great fit. And how are you setting, settling in here? You've got Joe McNally, obviously, who's the coach now. Um, guys like Josh Taylor around, you know, good, good fighters. Yeah, I've got Joe and Dick and John. Um, they're, they're literally, they're excellent. Great, great, great they are. And um, not only that, you've got the likes of Josh Taylor, Callum Smith, you've got Beefy in the gym, you've got JJ Metcalf, and the list goes on, Dennis and etc. And um, Frankie, young Frankie as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't even know, I'm forgetting people there. So, the list just goes on, mm -hmm. you know. But at the end of the day, everything's all on my doorstep here. I don't have to move. It's, Liverpool is just like the second city of Dublin. So, I feel like I'm at home now at the moment. Feels good. Feels like everyone's just around the corner from me where I am. Um, strength and condition, literally five minutes away. I've got the best strength and condition coach I could ask for. Which is Carl Evans. He does me nutrition as well. Got the best coach I could ask for as well. So yeah, listen, it's all it's all in one. It's all wrapped up and um, it's ready to go now and explode. Closer to Dublin as well. Closer to home. It's literally from door to door. Yeah. It's an hour and ten minutes. So we're in London with Fuego. I know it's it's only an extra hour, but it's crazy. Like you know, like it's just, it's mad how close Liverpool is to Dublin. Were you uh, were you getting lonely where you were? I wasn't getting lonely, no. Um, I just hadn't got the comfort that I wanted. You know, I think I done all the nitty gritty stuff in the early on in my career, living above the pub. Um, I've got a young family now, so when when I was in camp, I was still living over a pub. They couldn't come to me, so um, even though it was for a long weekend and stuff like that, they were coming over to the pub. They were sacrificing their comfort for me, and I think it was time to time to pack it up now and then push on somewhere else where I can get my own comfort and keep this train. Try and the same level of training, the same if not higher. So that's exactly what I've done. I made the change, and um, listen, I couldn't be any happier now at the moment. I saw uh, there was an Instagram post that you put out where you talked about. I think you missed something in in your daughter's life. Maybe it was her first day of school or, or something like that. That's less likely to happen now, I guess. Now that you're you're closer to home. Yeah, I missed her. Uh, I missed her birthday. I missed her first day of school, and. Um, yeah, so much more. Um, like, it's like, yeah, a lot more, yeah. But listen, it is what it is. That's the sacrifice that I made. Um, but I'm just happy now where I have a place to call home when they come over. So what's happening day to day with you at the moment then? You, um, you presumably just live very close by here. Yeah, literally across the road. Yeah, nice, nice, <laughs> very good. Literally right across the road. So what, what do you do? What do you do with your time? <sighs> Wake up in the morning from here. It's like a nine to five. It's like a nine to five job. It's um, I train early in the morning, which is probably maybe start at like nine, half nine. Won't go out of the gym maybe to about half one, quarter two. Home, lunch, dinner, mate. Uh, lunch, little sleep. Back to my second session there at five. But I let the track of strength train. Back home, eight o'clock. I'll have my tea, and then that's it. Then every day, every day, literally. And the schedule that I have now that I'm set on now is like the the weeks just roll, rolling boy. No, I can't believe it's just over two and a half weeks now to the fight. It's crazy. Looking forward to getting back first fight of 2024? Yeah, 100%. Looking forward to getting this year off. It's going to, I think 2024 is going to be my biggest year and my best year, yeah. How would you reflect on 2023? I mean, there was a, a couple of big performances in there. It was, it was good performances, but it wasn't active as, as, as I wanted it to be, to be, you know. So I think this year now, I'm just going to grab this year by the, um, by the grips and just, just go for it. Just get as many fights in as we can. In terms of this camp, you were saying you, you sparred Josh Taylor yesterday. Presumably that's the first time you've sparred him. How much did you take from that? Did he give you any advice? He's a former unified, I think, undisputed champion, actually, in your weight division. Yeah, he, um, he was very impressed. He even got out of the ring and said, like, like you are spectacular. I didn't, I, didn't think you could, I didn't think you could perform like that. And, um, and I just believed myself so much, you know, and I just... Took her, took her in one ear out the other, you know, but he gave me some good t tips about using certain jabs and about my fo footwork and stuff like that. Everything, everything else was all excellent. So to get, to get that kind of stuff from him, undisputed, 
Do you know what I mean? So what more can you take from that? Sort of gives you someone to aim for in the gym as well, doesn't it? A million percent. It's where I am now, money can't buy. So I'm very, very happy. And the experience I'm getting is incredible. You've got Dennis here with you as well. So there's a, a little bit of, well, I guess your, your sort of Kent home you've brought up with you as well. How, how's it going with you and yeah, Dennis? Yeah, well, it's funny enough because I come in here and, and after, after I see my nutrition, I come in here then to train. And I, they'd seen the minutes, didn't they? I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I'm training here yourself. So it was just an easy fit, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We've got Keevan and Jarrett over here, another Irish guy, and then we've got Gary Cully, another Irish guy as well. So, yeah, the Irish is taking over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've become like a forged uh, s forged Irish stout ab brand ambassador, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. How did um, that come about, Mr. Big Time? Um, well, Connor just reached out, and then um, obviously we know Connor quite well from being back in Dublin. He's very supportive of his own, as you know, and um, yeah, he just wanted to see me driving success, so he got behind me. and. That's it then, that's how the link ha ever happened. What's he like as a, as a person then? And has he given you any kind of guidance on, on your career? Obviously he's not a boxer, but he knows a route to becoming very successful in combat sports. Just believe, believe in the shave and work hard. And um, everything else just falls in, in, into place from there on. Let's go back to that win over Kane Gardner. Um, you had to overcome some adversity in that. There was a cut. Uh, yeah. How do you reflect on it? Yeah, it was great fight, great pace. I kept the pace right through the whole fight. Um, I didn't, I didn't I think I had a flat round fit maybe or something like that, but it wasn't too serious. I knew like once I got back to the corner reset because I got a head clash and then I got the cut, and then it was a bit, it was a bit blur. The blood was in my eye, so I went back, very kind in the corner. Eddie Lamb done a tremendous job, listening to Al and stuff like that, and everything went, come back out, stamped the stamp foot once again, went back out, up the gears, and then. Um, Caught him with a body shot, stuck him, caught him with a left hook to the head then, and then that was it then. And once I, once I seen that six round round like that, I was like, I have him. Time to suck the gears now. I would have hoped to be open up a little bit more, it would have been more successful for me, so. I've done enough chasing that night. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer fights like that, where you're having to really, you know, go through the gears to try and get to him, or do you prefer the one, one, one round blowouts? To be honest, it doesn't matter. Once I get the win, that's the main thing for me. That's all I care about. What were your lessons from that night? Um, I don't know. Um, I was confident I was going through the rounds at a high pace. And I had a great job that night. Um, he, he was a guy that turned down, he was a guy that a lot of people turned down. I took, I stepped up, took the opportunity and showcased my skills. And how do you see this? 140 pound division at the moment. There's a, a lot of world class talent. Obviously, you know guys like Devin Haney at, at the very top of it. Where, how far off uh, is is Big Bang? Yeah, it's stacked at the moment. Mm. The 140 division is stacked. Um, obviously, it's my weight division. A lot of action going on. So yeah, I'll, listen to be honest, I just want to get active. And by the back end of this year, I'll be one uh, point for a world title eliminator, if not early next year. So that's the perfect 2024 for the Big Bang. 100%. Homecoming yeah. on the agenda anyway? Well, did, we're going to push Frank for the homecoming. We want it. Um, I've been promised it. So why not? I, I think we can do serious tickets. I can do a lot of tickets. Um, we could at least do, I reckon we could do a 5,000 5, capacity easy. So why not? You, fans are screaming for it. Yeah, you've got quite a fan base actually. Yeah, they, the fans they, are screaming for it. The yeah. Irish fans are screaming for it. You know, so why not? Have you uh, heard all the noise around this Queensbury matchroom thing? And uh, do you want to get involved? Of course, why yeah. not? Out in Saudi, that doesn't get really bigger than that, does it, at the moment? Have you seen the name that a lot of people have been linking you to is Dalton Smith? Then like, oh. I have seen. Yeah. Thoughts? Um, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm game. No problem at all. If that fight happens, it happens. Especially out in Saudi. It's good. Everyone will hope for that. You've seen the response I got on social media. I'm confident. Yeah, why not? You think you'd do a job on him? Why not? I believe in myself, back myself so much. If you don't, why would you be in the sport? Absolutely that. Uh, away from yourself, a couple of fight predictions. Fury you seek? Fury, just for the height. Too big. Just, he's too big. Too big, too clever. Joshua and Garni. <sighs> That's a tough one. Um, Amazing that it, you are like, oh, it's a tough one, it's Joshua versus... It's a tough one because of the situation Nagano put Tyson mm. in, with Tyson Fury in. Um, I'll probably go with Joshua for the boxing skills. 
Pierce O'Leary versus his next opponent. Pierce O'Leary boy KO. <laughs> Is that a promise? 100%. Okay. okay. Pierce, I can't wait to see you uh, in 2024. Best of luck to you. I'm excited. Thanks very much, Jeff. Thanks mate. very much.